Good morning. Welcome back. It's 611. There's been some promising news on the vaccine front. Pfizer recently announced that his vaccine is safe for young teens, and it's currently testing its vaccine on even younger children. Joining us live now is Dr. Ogachika Lozi, a member of the Texas Infectious Disease Preparedness Task Force. Dr. Lozi, thanks for being here with us this morning. Thanks for having me. So I'd like to ask first off, Pfizer says its vaccine is safe for teens. What sort of impact do you think this will have in our efforts to vaccinate everyone? And do you think this is going to, how do you think this is going to shape plans for the upcoming school year? Yeah, I think it's a great question. So I'm going to break this into two pieces and try to be as deliberate as possible. I think on the one end, Pfizer's data looks good. And I think we expected it to look good because it's been so good in adults. 12 to 15 is a adolescent range, and so that's great. I think the piece about do we need it to get to herd immunity and protect our population is a different conversation. There are a lot of infectious disease experts, epidemiologists, and pediatricians that will disagree. My take presently is that we don't need children vaccinated to get to herd immunity. The adult population will achieve that. Again, there are going to be a lot of anxious or concerned patients that are going to want this vaccine. And so I think it's too early to have this conversation about whether this actually adds anything, especially since we know that children don't get as sick and the children effects for COVID is not the same as adults. And so taking a vaccine to reduce something that's a very rare event is going to be, I think, controversial and something that we're going to have to figure out later. So then what you're calling for then is to make sure that more vulnerable populations, adults all get vaccinated, but maybe teens and young children don't need to be as high up on your priority list? Absolutely. I mean, the vulnerable populations are those that have borne the brunt of the deaths during COVID. Now, there are going to be some adolescents, <clears throat> excuse me, there are going to be some adolescents that are sick. They may have immune compromise, they may have pulmonary issues, and absolutely makes sense to get them in line for that kind of vaccination. But on average, a healthy kid or a healthy adolescent that doesn't bear the brunt of this disease, and we know they don't spread as much, it's going to be, it's a question that we have to answer into the future. If you look at nationwide trends, doctor, cases and hospitalizations are on the rise in several states. Are you concerned that we could see another surge here in El Paso? I think there's always a concern, especially when you think about the variants, but you titled it properly in the beginning. This is a race to vaccination. We know how to fix this problem. We have the tools and the weaponry to fight this virus now. This is not last year. So even if there is a fourth surge, we now have the tools to defeat it. And so in areas where they're having those surges, the expectation is that the government or the CDC will surge vaccine into those geographic locations to beat it back down. I think to date in El Paso, we've been doing well. We're doing great actually from a vaccine standpoint, and we have to keep on doing it. You talked at the top of the clip about a bunch of events that are happening with vaccines, and I think we're blessed that we haven't had the issue of hesitancy and the city and county and a host of other organizations have really been focused on getting vaccines out. And quickly, doctor, what do you think our summer will look like? I mean, I always say I don't like to be Nostradamus, right? But I think that if we continue to go like this, our rates are falling, hospitalizations are coming down, the rate of new hospitalizations are reducing. It's estimated that we probably have 45 to 55 percent of our city that's already been immunized, either by natural immunity and having the infection or by the vaccines. I think by the summer, when we get to a position where everybody that wants the vaccine can get it, we're going to have to have a conversation about how do we return to normal? How do we have a summer that potentially some people have said would stock in, right? And so I'm excited for the summer and what it might look like going into the fall. All right, looking forward to that as well. Dr. Lozi, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. We'll be right back. Stay with us.